What's going on everyone? It's Kelly here. Check out what I'm going to make some soup with. Now, these two black grouper were in our freezer for about three months because three months ago, myself and Blue Gate behind the camera went down to Key West with Key West Waterman and spearfished. I shot my first wahoo, my first black grouper, which was one of these, and I feel like it was my first something else. Maybe not. But Blue Gabe shot a bunch of fish too. I mean, I love going down there to spearfish. And not only do you get some beautiful fillets off of black grouper, but you can utilize the entire carcass and make soup, which is what we're gonna do today. So first things first is you're gonna need a fairly large pot, depending on the size fish you're going to be using. Normally when I make fish soup, I use some pretty big fish because bigger fish have a lot more fat, which the fat equals the broth in the soup. So I have a very large pot, I actually got it off Amazon. I've had it on simmer for probably a couple hours now, so the water's definitely warm. And I'm just gonna throw our fish heads in there. Hopefully they'll fit. I honestly haven't really measured it out, but we're about to find out. Give her a little swim. Oh, perfect, look at him. He just nuzzles up in that pot so perfectly. I love it. And to store these in the freezer, I just put them in like a Publix or Walmart plastic bag or a very small trash bag that's unscented. All right, so I'm gonna bring that up to a boil, put the lid on, and we're gonna wait. Now, these fish were frozen, so I'm going to leave them in the pot for probably about, normally I would say 25 minutes to a half hour if the fish weren't frozen. So then you take them out and get the meat off the fish. But since they were frozen, I'll probably leave them in there for about 45 minutes. And then you'll see me strain it and you'll see the whole process. But first I wanna say thank you to BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, for sponsoring this video. So as most of you know who watch my channel, you know I'm a huge health advocate, whether it's working out, eating healthy, and in today's state of mind, it's mental health. And I am huge on mental health because if you guys knew me back in elementary school, I was super, super shy, like in my shell. I wouldn't talk to a camera, let alone talk to people in general. And I have talked to people um, in my upbringing that have really helped me blossom into the person I am today. So I think it's really important to be able to talk to someone who could understand you and to help you become a better version of yourself. BetterHelp can offer licensed therapists that are trained to listen to you and help you. And the most important thing is you can talk to your therapist in private and online at your own convenience. There's a broad range of expertise in BetterHelp's 20,000 plus therapist network that gives you access to help that may not be available in your area. You just fill out a questionnaire to help access your specific needs and then you get matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Then you schedule secure video and phone sessions, plus you can exchange unlimited messages and everything you share is completely confidential. I love that it doesn't matter any time throughout your day. If you're feeling stressed or overwhelmed, you can message BetterHelp. And you can request a new therapist at no additional charge anytime. Join the 2 million plus people who have taken charge of their mental health with the experienced BetterHelp therapist. And I know we can all use a discount every now and then. So if you go to the description below this video and click the link, you'll get 10% off your first month. And if you're watching this on TV and you can't get to the description below, you can get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash Kelly Young. So now that you know everything about BetterHelp to help yourself make a better you, we're gonna go to the grocery store. But first, you know that fish tank that's on the counter in my video? Well, I unplugged it because it's kind of noisy when I'm filming and we went to plug it back in and it stopped working. So. We had to put um, a couple of the animals in another tank that we have, and we're gonna go ahead and let this little guy go. He's a little puffer fish um, that we had in the tank for probably about four months, so he's gonna go back home, uh, back into the wild. So I have to release him first, and then we're gonna go to the grocery store and pick out all the vegetables that we need for this soup. It is screaming windy right now. All right, little guy. Let's go. This is just a local little boat ramp that's right next to the house here. He's probably going to be so happy to be back home. All right, let's see how I can film this and do this at the same time. Dun, 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 dun. All right. 
All right, holding the camera in between my knees. Hopefully you don't fall in the water. All right, little guy. Go on. He's about to swim out. Right. All right, do you like the bag as your home? There you go, come on, you got this. You gotta go out, silly. There he goes. Aww. Well, I know it doesn't look the cleanest, but it's just because it's low tide. There he goes. <laughs> Alright, you guys, let's go grocery shopping. Alrighty, I got my reusable bag, and we're at Sprouts Farmer's Market. It's this really cool, kind of like a Whole Foods vibe type deal, grocery store that we have here in Stewart, Florida. That's Sprouts. Let's go shopping. Viewer discretion is advised. This house stinks very, very badly. <laughs> yes, if you guys decide to make fish head soup or boil down any part of a fish, your house will smell fishy for probably a couple days. Y'all notice something different right over there? <sighs> R.I.P. I told him when I went to go release the puffer fish, we had to get rid of the thing. What is that? Oh, what? the crickets and the leopard gecko thing right there. I'm sitting here while you're talking, like, what is that noise? Hey, do. So, the reason we have small animals on our countertops, the leopard geckos and Luke's perma crabs. <laughs> <laughs> there's so many noises going on. There's crickets, there's dogs eating, who, who knows? Um, so, we have a raccoon issue on the back patio. Uh, we did set out a trail camera on the back patio and got some footage of this raccoon lurking around. Unfortunately, we haven't caught them yet. That will be in a next YouTube video of hopefully catching them. I have to bring in Blue Gabe to catch this raccoon because it's been four days and I have yet unsuccessfully to catch this thing. However, I did successfully catch the neighbor's raccoon. Can I, can I make my fish soup? If you get lippy, this is what this is for. Let me see this real quick. Another thing before I dump this fish soup since one day we'll get to the fish soup. When I went down to Island Murata with Sarah Stanzik, she had this tickle stick with a lobster gauge on it. How convenient was it to catch a lobster and just use the gauge right there? So I went ahead and bought a bunch of them. All right, stop distracting me, please. Okay, that's <laughs> enough. If I did this in your video, you would be so pissed off right now. Put it back. All right, you ready? Wow. I just got back from Sprouts. I went ahead and chopped up some scallions, aka green onion. We got some sweet white onion that I chopped up as well. I have some garlic I have yet to chop and some rainbow chard, as well as some already pre-sliced organic white mushrooms and baby bella mushrooms. But we must do this first. You gotta have two big pots on hand because we have to strain out the fish bones. Oh, all right. We're gonna move this over here. So first I'm gonna go ahead and take some tongs and we're gonna take out some of the bigger pieces and just put them on a tray. Oh, that's gonna break. 
Go, go, go. All right, that's good. Try to get that head out of there. Oh my gosh. It's gonna fall apart now. All right, ready? Look at this. Oh no. So you wanna get a lot of the big pieces out before you strain it. That way you don't fill your strainer with all the big pieces. Especially if you got two fish in here. All right. Oh, that one is still attached. That one didn't break. That's why it was so heavy. Oh, God. I just got covered in grouper slime. Aw. Must be a hard life. Look, there's his teeth. Arr. Look at all that fat. Couple more pieces. Dang, I, this is a lot of fish. Yeah, I would need a huge strainer if I would've strained all this. Look, there's a throat, all that meat. Mm -hmm. Some fins. And some more meat. That looks like a cheek. Look at that, look at that white meat right there. I think that was the, that was the cheek meat right there. Best meat in the fish. All right. Oh, there's the jaw. There we go. Now we must strain it. Oh boy. Without burning myself. So I have another pot in the sink with a strainer, a really fine strainer. Hopefully the pot's big enough under there. Oh boy. There's a... You got it. I might have to sacrifice. Oh no, might be just perfect. Oh man. So what I'll do is I'll take this pot and I'll give it a quick rinse in the sink because there are like, you know, maybe little scaly pieces or little bones in there that I just want to get rid of. And then right here, just strain out all the stuff you necessarily don't want to chew on in a soup. Coming close to this, to this broth right here. Now this fish has only been on the stove for probably about two hours. And as you can see, like, it kind of looks like you put oil in water. You'll see little bubbles. That's your fish collagen, your fish fat. Now, there's still a lot of fat on this fish that I still wanna break down. So I'm gonna go ahead and rinse this pot out, transfer that back into this pot, um, pick off all the meat off the carcasses so that way it doesn't overcook while I'm cooking the broth and do this process again. been picking off the prime pieces of meat off um, the carcass here. It gets a little messy, gets a little smelly, but that's just how it is. If you're making chicken broth, it would be the same thing, but with chicken. Now I'm only really putting like some of the heads and the jaws back into um, my broth here, just because I still had a lot of that collagen on it. I'm not going to put all of this back. I mean, you can if you want, um, but a main reason I'm not putting all this back is because I believe one of the groupers still had gills left in it and if you do leave the gills in your fish while you make a soup it might make the soup a little bit fishy so i'm just picking off some prime pieces putting them back in the pot and we're gonna go from there i'm gonna sit here and pick out some fish meat and while i'm doing that oh those crickets are driving they're like driving me insane they keep cricketing and they keep surprising me um i'm gonna let this boil on high for probably about three more hours Normally I like to make my fish soup kind of overnight, so I'll put it on a low heat and let it go like eight, nine hours overnight. But I don't have time for that right now, so I'm just gonna bump up the heat and get this process going. All right, so I have the spines and the heads back in the pot. I'm gonna crank up that heat. Now the rest of this, which I normally, like I said, would put it back in the pot, but that one head had the, had the uh, gills in there, so whatever it happens but my chickens are super excited because they love fish oh, our door's kind of broken so. 
So I'm going to give them a little fish buffet. Oh my gosh, look at them right now. Are you guys excited? Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, I have to get a container to put that in because I don't want to be stepping on fish bones when I go into their enclosure. All right, hold up, hold up. I know y'all are excited. Get bones everywhere. <laughs> they are so excited. Don't tip it over, please. You guys love fish. <laughs> that just made their entire week. Garlic can smell so good when you're cooking. Doesn't smell good on breath, but man, when you're cooking fresh garlic, oof, it smells good. So going ahead and preparing um, the vegetables I'm using for this soup. Normally when I make fish soup, I cake it in veggies. I mean, I find everything I can from sweet potatoes to garlic to chard to every green vegetable I could find within zucchini and squash, onions, mushrooms, like I go all in. But this time I kind of want to make it a little more simple. I have onions, chard, rainbow chard, garlic, ginger, and mushrooms. If I haven't already said that. Um, and I don't think I'm going to add the fish meat in the soup mix. I think I'm going to just top it in the soup. So Gabe and the boys are at Mr. Jean's house, which is our neighbor right down the road. He has a bunch of turkeys, quail, chickens and he has been having a raccoon problem. And then the next morning we had a raccoon problem. So fortunately we did catch his raccoon, um, but as for our raccoon, we're still trying to catch it. So they're just getting the trail camera that I had set up over there because it's been taking videos and pictures of chickens all day. While they do that, I'm gonna finish prepping these veggies. So I have this really cool garlic, um, I guess you could say grater. I was in downtown Stewart and it's called simplystoneware.com. It's a super neat grater, um, very simple, easy to clean, easy to use. So you wanna get this a little bit wet first, like so. And then you put your cloves of garlic in this little sleeve here. And if you do cook with fresh garlic, it's always a pain in the butt to peel them. So you stick that in there. I think you can do more than one. I don't know if y'all can see it, but you roll it and like the little rubber thing like grips onto that, those peels and like peels it right off. See? And it makes it a lot easier and it comes right off. Boom. Garlic clove. Okay, we have our cloves of garlic here and you're just gonna grate them on this little thing. Just kind of like you're doing cheese, grating cheese or rubbing it on there just like that. How cool is that? You have fresh grated garlic. 
I mean, this is good for garlic bread, which we make a lot of garlic bread. Soups, salads, dressings, sauteing. It's really cool. hours later we have our broth this is going to be hot let me grab another napkin or uh, another rag real quick you got anything you want to say to your fans does it stink no. in here does it smell funny luke i don't know <laughs> does it smell like fish in the house no <laughs> that'd be something wrong with your nose look how thick and yellow that broth is Ooh. So I'm going to do the same process, rinse this out, pour the broth back in here, bone free. And after that, then it's the fun part. Then you get to add all your vegetables and everything you want in your soup. There was the eyeball right there. Oh yeah, we get eyeball juice in our soup. All right. Ooh, slight drip. hard messy part is over. Now we're going to add our onions and mushrooms first. A tickle stick just fell off the leopard gecko cage behind you. Now we have our mushrooms. You want to kind of put them in the order of like how long they should cook, if that makes sense. I'm adding a lot of mushrooms because I want this soup to be mushroomy. Stir that in. So after the mushrooms and onions do cook for about 10 minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and add everything else to the pot and then we're gonna taste test it. What about the fish? So I'm not adding the fish into the bulk of the soup. I'm going to add it on top when we like sit down and visually eat it, if that makes sense. So you can add it. So not that way it's not like in the soup. It's just like a topping. Okay, so we just made the kids some deer meat tater tots and green beans for dinner because I wasn't sure if they were gonna like this. Plus I did have to let this soup cool down. It's been boiling for hours. I did add sea salt. If you don't add salt to this soup, it will taste like nothing. Uh, black pepper. Uh, Cayenne pepper, is that how you say it? The spicy red pepper, cayenne pepper, and turmeric. Alrighty. Kind of looks like that clear soup from the Japanese restaurant, but the yellow is the turmeric in there. Mmm, that's good. What's the benefits of that soup? Oh man, I'd have to put a list on the screen. We'll do it. I will. There's so much. I mean, mushrooms themselves have insane health benefits. And I'm going to sound kind of like a hippie right now, but nature's medicine, mushrooms. If you guys Google health benefits of mushrooms, you will be amazed. Not to mention the broth of this soup. You know when you're sick, when you were little, and even when you're an adult, chicken noodle soup always makes you feel better. It's because of the broth. This is so good. Mmm, you know what I'm missing? Well, it doesn't even need it. But I do have a little bit of fish in here. So I can add to it if I want some protein. Mm. I will say, the one thing this soup is missing is seaweed. Seaweed, mushrooms, and sea salt are probably the three most beneficial things on this earth to eat as well as really good water. But right now this video is ending, you guys. Thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, leave a positive comment below, and we will see you guys next time. See ya.